often decides the balance of power in the SEC and in the nation. Alabama is the reigning conference champion, but this season has been a bumpy ride. Nevertheless, the Tide enters today atop the SEC West and controls their destiny in the defense of their title. Tennessee has owned Alabama, winning the last five. SEC champions in 97 and 98, Tennessee is a spoiler this season, but they could salvage their year with the defeat of the Crimson Tide today. We welcome you to the Home Depot College Football, a presentation of CBS Sports. This afternoon, the Crimson Tide of Alabama come into Knoxville as they take on the University of Tennessee. Less than one mile from downtown Knoxville, the Hill. The campus of the University of Tennessee, autumn in full foliage now. The torchbearer trying to urge the Tennessee team, a young team on. programs, $5 right here. Programs. Well, those programs just a little more expensive than they were the first time these two teams played. That was in 1901. Today, the Crimson Tide with a three and three mark and Tennessee comes in two and three. The relevance of this game for Alabama reflected in the SEC West standings. They are three and one and in control of their own destiny. And for Tennessee, 0 and three in the conference, but Phil Fulmer, the coach, preaching to his young team, a victory today could ignite a surge and get them into a major bowl. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and a story of quarterbacks today. Yeah, for Alabama, they've had two guys that have kind of shared the job through the first six games, Tyler Watts and Andrew Zow. Now, last week against Ole Miss, Tyler Watts started, hurt his knee in the fifth play of the game. Andrew Zow came in and played very well against Ole Miss. He is unquestionably the starter, and it was by far their best offensive game. For Tennessee, Vern, they're looking for a spark on offense, and they're going with their true freshman, Casey Clawson. He's a very talented guy, but he's making his first start, and the last time a true freshman started here was 1994, a guy named Peyton Manning. Alabama has won the toss and deferred the option until the second half, so Tennessee will get the ball. 71 degrees, wind out of the east at only three miles per hour, and the forecast for a gorgeous afternoon. 83rd meeting between the two teams. Tennessee has won the last five. Prior to that, that was a 10-game undefeated string for Alabama. Vern, I think the early part of the game is very critical for both teams. For Alabama, they want to keep the momentum going that they got last week. And for Tennessee, starting on offense, their freshman quarterback needs to start off. Yeah. Neil Thomas kicks off for Alabama, first time this year. And the result's positive for the Crimson Tide. They've been having serious kickoff problems all season long. So Thomas, the place kicker, replaces the punter and gets a touchback on the opening kick of his career. Now, Casey Clawson, Northridge, California, came to the South to play at Tennessee because he was so in love with the tradition of Southeast football and he's a, a very skilled guy he's a tall rangy quarterback he's pretty athletic pretty mobile by far the best arm of the Tennessee quarterback he's just young that's the only knock on him he'll throw on first down going deep left side Dante Stallworth is open and a big play for Carson to Stallworth on the opening play of the game You want to get your freshman quarterback off early? Go to your big play guy, Dante Stallworth. A good job escaping Gerald Dixon at the line, and you see the separation. That's what you want as a wide receiver. Create some space. Let the quarterback get you the football. A great start for Casey Clawson. That's a gain of 44 yards. Casey Clawson's first throw this season was a 19-yard touchdown toss to David Martin. That was in relief of A.J. Suggs. His first throw as a starter, equally as memorable. On first down, play fake. Clawson rolls right. Settles for a receiver and overthrows Cedric Wilson, number 14. He was all by himself at the 20. 
Now let's check the volunteer offense. Coleman, Herrera, Scott Wells in place of the injured Fred Weary. Bernard Gooden gets the start today at right guard. His first, Michael Munoz, the freshman at right tackle. Henry, Bartholomew, Eric Parker, Cedric Wilson, and John Finlayson. And here is Philip Fulmer, graduate of Tennessee, 1972, in his ninth year as the head coach. Second and ten. Travis Henry. Three yards to the 32, perhaps the 33. See where the spot goes. And let's check the Alabama defense. Antoine Odom, Kenny Smith, Jared Johnson, and Kenny King back in the lineup after missing three games. He played part-time last week. Darius Gilbert, Victor Ellis, and Salim Rashid, the linebackers. And in the secondary, and this is a fine secondary, Milo Lewis, Tony Dixon, Marcus Spencer, and Gerald Dixon. Mike DeBose, fourth year head coach of his alma mater, Alabama. Third down, Clawson back. Hit and dropped. Jared Johnson, number 96, got there. Obviously, Alabama wants to try to create some confusion. A nice twist game on the inside. Watch Johnson go on the twist, and he doesn't get picked up by Bernard Gooden. Bernard Gooden has to trade that guy off with the center, and a nice, effective twist, that time inside, by the Alabama tackles. And Tennessee will be forced to punt. Dave Leverton is on from the 40-yard line. Antonio Carter is back. Freddie Millens will play today but will not return punts. He's got a sprained knee, but it's still bothering him. How about this one? Touchback, yes, he was in the end zone. The ball crossed the plane. It was laying there, and they had a chance. It was a beautiful kick by Leverton, but the ball crossed the plane of the end zone. The official right down the line watching this, and you can see the ball cross the end zone before it was touched by Kenyon Whiteside. Leverton thought for that long he had the perfect punt. Alabama holds. They get the ball back after the punt. Andrew Zhao, the junior quarterback, the starter now after Tyler Watts went down with the injury last week. Watts hands it off. He's got it. He's still got it. Nice fake. A flag is down. So it might be coming back. But Zhao with the fake to Galloway and then the keeper around the right side. Bill Goss is the referee today. Well, you see the Alabama players moving backwards and it was thrown in the area where you would expect offensive holding. Holding on the offense. Henley's 10 yards from the spot of the foul on the running play. Repeat first down. Andrew Zow started this season and the game at UCLA was ineffective, gave way to Tyler Watts. Watts started four games, Zhao on relief, and then last week, the unexpected, in the open field, Tyler Watts slipped, fell, tore his ACL on his left knee, and Zhao is now the starter. And played exceptionally well coming off the bench last week, was 18 of 22 for 261 yards. First and 19. This time they do hand it off to Galloway. And let's check the Alabama offense that will be facing a second down and 19. Dante Ellington, all 354 pounds at left tackle, then Red Mill, Hogan Alexander, and Will Cuthbert at right tackle. Ahmad Galloway, Dustin McClintock in the backfield, Jason McCadley, Antonio Carter, Sean Draper listed as the tight end, but Freddie Millens did start. He missed last week with a sprained knee. He was on the field first time out last week. Second down. Over the head of Arvin Richard, who was in as a scat back. And let's check the Tennessee defense. D'Angelo Lloyd back after missing a game with a spinal cord injury. Henderson has had a terrific season. Kendrick and Overstreet as well. 
Then Westmoreland, Stevenson, and Sessions at linebackers. And the real weakness, candidly, about this Tennessee team is in the secondary. Miles, Baker, Lott, and Teddy Gaines. Yeah, no interceptions by any secondary players. Only two for the whole team. But you mentioned John Henderson, back-to-back -back plays. He was an absolute handful. And Alabama is learning what Georgia found out all game, their last game. Henderson is a man in their defensive tackle. On third down, stunts by the defensive line. Zal throws it way over the head of the intended receiver. And the closest man there was number 16, the freshman out of New Jersey, Rashad Baker. Well, good start for the Tennessee defense. Again, they had an off week last week. They really went back and emphasized the physical aspect, the fundamentals of tackling, getting off blocks. A nice series for their defense, aided by the first down penalty that set Alabama back right away. Lane Bearden will punt it away to Eric Parker, who's uh, averaged 8.3 per return in the year 2000. Here's Bearden's punt, and this is returnable. Parker grabs it to 45. Can't shake the tackle. 34-yard punt and three yards on the return. Test your sports knowledge. Play Aflac Trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, the keyword, CBS Sports Line. Burn, that was a great job of covering the kick by Sean Touré because as you mentioned, that was a very returnable punt. He caught it, it was low, he had a chance to run, but Ray beat the, beat the blockers and would not let go of Eric Parker. First down and 10. Henry hit at the line, spins, and gets inside the point to the 38. Tackle made by Salim Rashid, number 11. As Rashid, who led this team in tackles last year as a starter, as a true freshman. Yeah, very unusual. Never had that happen at Alabama, but he came in with such physical and mental maturity. There was really no kind of transition year for him from high school to college football and played outstanding as a freshman. A lot of people think maybe he's not playing as well, but he really is outside of the UCLA game where he had some problems. Fumble and a problem on the center snap. Scott Wells is in at center. There's also a flag down. Wells replacing Fred Weary, who was injured in game two this season, is out for the season. Dead ball, false start on the offensive line. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, the one thing as a young quarterback you got to pay attention to, you can't pull out early. And that time you saw Clawson leaving the center a little bit early. You got to make sure the snap first. And obviously, there's a lot going on in his mind. And he's not with his main guy. That's Fred Weary. Not only was the starting center, but was clearly the best offensive lineman on this team and the glue that held all these young guys together. And he was injured in the Florida game and has been sorely missed with this Tennessee offense. Second down, 11 from the eye. Clawson comes right, little low and behind the intended receiver, and it's incomplete. Intended for the fullback, Will Bartholomew. And that sets up third and 11. Smokey looks on. Third down is when the game changes for a young quarterback. It's when a defensive coordinator like Ellis Johnson will give a lot of different looks, bring different kinds of pressure. And you want to really try to avoid these kind of situations. Third down and 11. Welcome those of you who watched Notre Dame's victory over West Virginia. Tennessee with the ball on a third down 11. They found Dante Stallworth, but there is a flag on the play, and this one might be coming back. On the opening offensive play of the game, and Bill Goss is our referee, the op opening offensive play of the game, a 44-yard strike from the freshman quarterback, Casey Clawson, to Dante Stallworth, but uh, Tennessee unable to get a first down after that. They had to punt. Alabama got the uh, ball back three and out and now Tennessee with its second offensive set of the ball game. Alabama winners of the last two over South Carolina and Ole Miss and they have appeared to have righted the ship. They come in with a three and three record but in control of their own destiny. Tennessee 0 and three in the conference for the first time since 1988 and their season record two and three but they have been in each of those three losses. Third and 16 at the 48. Here is Casey Clawson, his first start as a Tennessee volunteer. Nailed, run.
across the helmet. Burn the second sack of Casey Clawson, and the second time they ran a twist. This time it was not the two tackles, it was the defensive end and the tackle. Aries Monroe is the guy who's going to get there first. Now watch the stunt right here. Watch the stunt between the end and the tackle. They cross. Here comes the end. He beats the tackle. Munoz, he's there first. Takes the helmet, but not the quarterback down. And then the rest of the tide get there. But two stunts really cause problems. Leverton's second punt of the game. Antonio Carter gathers it in at the 15. Bumps into his own man, he gets six and is down at the 21. A 45-yard punt and seven on the return. Well, Casey Clawson, one year ago this weekend, was the quarterback for Alamanny High in Northridge, California. They were playing Santa Margarita Catholic. This is a little tougher. Home Depot College Football on CBS. is sponsored by the Home Depot. Blockbuster. Norelco and by the Aztec from Pontiac. So for when the final count is revealed, there will be more than 105,000 gathered here at Neyland Stadium for this 83rd get together Alabama and Tennessee. And the Crimson Tide coming in, having won their last two, South Carolina and Ole Miss, most convincing last week with a 45 7 victory. Alabama has lost the last five games to Tennessee. Here's Andrew Zal with the toss. Samad Galloway is hit and dropped. No gain for Tennessee. Well, Alabama now with Andrew Zal, the junior at quarterback, Casey Clawson, the freshman for Tennessee. Todd, this really is a story of two quarterbacks. Well, it is. I mean, Tennessee looking for a spark. They went to the true freshman, Casey Clawson, hit the first pass of the game with a big one, and then has had some problems since. Andrew Zhao has shared time through the first six games with Tyler Watts, but Tyler Watts injured last week against Ole Miss. Zhao came off the bench, played exceptionally well. It was the best offensive game of Alabama, but they've had a slow start here today so far against the Volunteers. And again, the spread formation with five out men. Here's Zhao across the middle, crossing pattern underneath to the 27-yard line. The catch is made by Jason McCadley, number 80. And the tackle made by Andre Lott. Zhao, who hit his last 12 passes to set a school record for Alabama. Well, you see what he did as a starter in those first two games, and he admits he struggled. He, he kind of talked the talk but didn't walk the walk when they started the season. But coming off the bench, particularly against South Carolina and last week against Ole Miss, he's played exceptionally well, kind of like the way he played last year. Third and five. Out of the spread, Zhao, run pass option, lofts it out, incomplete. Had his man there, McCadley. An almost similar pass last week in the Ole Miss game went for 60 yards. It was Antonio Carter then. This was a good call by Charlie Stubbs. The blitz came from the opposite side, so he's rolling away from the blitz, and he has the receiver open for first down yardage. Has to put a little bit more on that, make it an easier catch for the receiver. Don't make him have to go up in the air and fight the sideline at the same time. And Michael James was the intended receiver, number 86. And here's Rashad Baker, who is back. Bearden, a second consecutive poor punt taken by Baker, who has bounced out of uh, bounds at the 44-yard line, a 15-yard return. A flag is down back at the 47 of Tennessee. Bearden needs to get a little more height on those punts. Those are too easy to return. They're going to come back on a penalty on, return, on this one. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team. And it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul to first down. You see Mike DuBose talking to Bearden right now. He says, you, you can't kick it that low. They've got dangerous return guys. Our guys are fighting to get down the field, but you got to do a better job helping our guys. The penalty does negate a fine return. Tennessee does have the ball. Back at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee with a first down 10 at their own 36. Jason Witten in as a tight end, a true freshman. Here's Clawson back. He'll tuck it and run. Will Bartholomew tries to help him out. Clawson knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 
Well, he came into school last January, graduated high school early, so he did go through spring practice. And Phil Fulmer telling us, Todd, he was very much in the mix right. in the early fall until he could develop tendonitis. Yeah, missed a couple weeks of practice, actually, or there's a good chance he might have been the starter when the season began. He was clearly the most talented of the three quarterbacks that they have. Joey Matthews, the sophomore, A.J. Suggs, another redshirt freshman. And off to Henry, quick opener left guard. And he's out to the 50 for a first down and 10, a gain of eight for Travis Henry. And Casey Clawson, uh, again, he's he's got great skills as a thrower, but that play right there is something that's going to help him through this game. The running football, running with Travis Henry, letting him take a little pressure off of not only the quarterback, but the offensive line and protecting this quarterback. Travis Henry needs to be a factor in this ball game. The last two games that they've lost against LSU and Georgia, Travis Henry has been very much a non-factor for Tennessee's offense. David Martin in a wide receiver now. He's split wide left. The flanker is Leonard Scott. Here's the reverse to Scott. He's got world-class speed, but Kenny King, number 55, did a very nice job of pursuit and then allowed some supplemental help to come in. Boy, you're not kidding. What a play by Kenny King. I mean, this is a speed mismatch, but watch Kenny King right here just string this play out. He reads it late, and then he still has the ability to turn the corner and at least force him outside. Good tackle at the end by Gerald Dixon, but an excellent play by Kenny King. Kenny King missed three games with a stinger. A neck injury was back part-time last week. Number 55, second down and seven. And a motion call. Nice job by the freshman using the hard snap count. Now Kenny King, here's Bill Goss. Dead ball foul. Contact was made by the defense. Five-yard penalty repeat, second down. Kenny King wearing number 55. That, of course, was the number worn by the late Derek Thomas, who died in the car accident last January. Uh, Kenny King wore that number last year. It has been decided that from now on, in Derek Thomas's honor, mm. someone will wear number 55. Kenny King will continue to keep the number for as long as he plays at Alabama. Here's Travis Henry for a first down. And just to complete the story, Todd, there, it, there's precedent for this, but this just was decided this season. Back in the early 60s, Leroy Jordan wore number 54 for Alabama. The next man to wear that number was Paul Crane. That was almost accidental. The equipment manager gave it out. Crane became an All-American. Bear Bryant then said, no one else wears number 54 unless we vote on it. Mike DuBose, the coach, wore number 54, earned that right when he was a junior at Alabama. Here's a deep pass to Starwood. The flag is down. Pass interference, though. A lot of fighting out there between Gerald Dixon again on Dante Stallworth. Now, the one advantage that Stallworth has here is he is a physical guy. He's six foot one, 190 pounds, but he bench presses over 400 pounds. That strength enables him to get off the bump. You see the hold on the face mask by Dixon. And that, that's a strength mismatch. Dante Stallworth. And you see the end of the play, Jarrett Johnson with the big hit in the back of Casey Clawson. But they have made it known right now they're going to try to attack Gerald Dixon with their big play receiver, Dante Stallworth. The two fouls on the play. There's a personal foul. Roughing the passer. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. There was also personal foul. Face mask penalty on the defense. And it's declined. You don't very often see face mask when he doesn't have the football, but you see the right finger of Gerald Dixon right on the face mask. And then here's the late hit by Jarrett Johnson. The ball is gone. Clearly a good call by the officials on both counts. Take your pick of a personal foul. And after all of that, it's first down at the 25 in a scoreless first quarter. Lawson, handoff Henry, and Travis Henry moves the pigskin down to the 21-yard line. 
Travis Henry had a huge day here back week two against Florida. 175 yards yeah. against LSU, 89 against Georgia, 87. And look at the carries, 37 carries against Florida. I mean, they were riding him. He was their horse in that game. LSU, they got behind so quickly he couldn't be a factor. And then only 14 carries in the game against Georgia. They just couldn't run the football. Five carries today so far for Travis. Leonard Scott back on the field. Starts in motion. Clawson. Straight drop back, screen pass, left side. Cedric Wilson flies into the end zone, touchdown Tennessee. Burn, this play was made by the left tackle, Reggie Coleman. He did a great job of getting out in front of the play and getting the one block that he needed. Watch Coleman, the left tackle, get out in front of Cedric Wilson. Let's go of his man, and all Wilson needs is one block, and there it is, right there on Kelf Bailey, and the rest is history for Cedric Wilson. 23-yard touchdown toss, Clawson to Wilson. Kelf Bailey, down, yeah, that's Kelf Bailey. He's still down on the field after that block by Reggie Coleman. Well executed play. Good call by Randy Sanders. And again, the athleticism of Reggie Coleman to get out in front of the play. Casey Clawson, his first touchdown pass as a starting quarterback. He threw three touchdown passes against Louisiana Monroe. But this is a little bit different going against Alabama. He might, and I say he, Kelf Bailey, might have taken a knee to the helmet from Reggie Coleman. But uh, the good news is he is in an upright position. Take a look again now. Here's the block by Reggie Coleman. And Bailey's going to try to go under the block. And you see the left knee right on the helmet of Kelf Bailey. Bailey, who had a uh, blocked field goal return for a touchdown in the win over Ole Miss last week. A little woozy as he heads toward the sideline. Spelled K E. C-A-L-F and pronounced Kelf as if the C is not there. Casey Clawson. Nice start. Alex Walls to attempt the extra point. Tennessee strikes first. And they do so on a 23-yard touchdown toss. The freshman to the senior co-captain. Scoring with a 23-yard touchdown catch. And here is Christian Chauvin, who has now assumed the kickoff chores. That kick is taken by Arvin Richard in the 26th. Great downfield coverage. Chauvin with the kick taken after the 15-yard line. Coming up tomorrow on the NFL Today, join Jim Nance and the gang for all the latest NFL news and the latest sounds from the legendary rocker and football fan Sammy Hager. He'll perform live from the NFL Today studios on Fifth Avenue and then stay with the gang for the NASDAQ.com halftime report for all scores, highlights, and latest NFL news. Freddie Millen's back on the field. Split top of your screen, wide right. They come up to press him. And Bert, I think he has to be a major factor if Alabama wants to win today. Zhao across the middle behind his intended receiver. That was Michael James, number 86. You mentioned that Andrew Zhao completed 12 passes in a row against Ole Miss. He's one of five today, and he does not look comfortable yet. They're in the spread formation. That's where he is most effective. But he has not looked relaxed or comfortable to start this football game in the first quarter. See what he did, 18 of 22 last week against Ole Miss, and uh, he got in a real groove against that team. Dre Fulgham has come in now, number three. Here's Zhao. Great stiff arm. What a terrific old-fashioned football play that was. Now George and Kentucky were on the teeter-totter all afternoon. Let's get an update from Tim Brando. Yeah, Vern, you're talking about two offenses that can't drive 55 for Sammy Hagar either. This was the key play. Corey Phillips throws for 400 yards, replacing Quincy Carter. Here, the touchdown to Terrence Edwards, 34-30 the final, 528 yards for Lawrence, and that's a school record passing Tim Couch. Not enough. They'll play Florida next week. All right, Tim. You know, Jim Donnan said, we just got to survive this game. Find a way to get to the Florida game with one loss. They were able to do that. Great job by the backup quarterback.
Third and five. Zal, quarterback draw. But Tennessee sniffed it out. Henderson was there. And Henderson made the initial contact. And he got some help. Well, John Henderson has just been destroying people this year. Watch him right here over the center and guard. Watch the penetration, the push he gets on this play up the field. Off the ball, past the guard, onto the quarterback. No chance that time for Dennis Alexander. And John Henderson, one guy cannot block him. you got to put another body on Big John in there. Here's the punt. This one, a fine punt by Bearden. Fair catch. No, no fair catch. Beg your pardon. Rashad Baker. And he is down at the 31 yard line. They might spot him at the 32. You know, Vern, when Tennessee played Georgia last week, they had to take their best offensive lineman, their tackle, Jonas Jennings, and move him into guard to counter the big guy, John Henderson, in there. He was causing so much problems against Georgia's offense, they took their best offensive lineman, who was a tackle, moved him in to play guard for the second half. Alabama's going to have to make some adjustments on how they're going to handle John Henderson here in this ballgame as well. First down and 10, just outside the 31. David Martin in motion. Clawson hands it off. Travis Henry out to the 35-yard line. Well, these two teams meeting for the 83rd time, the series beginning in 1901 in 1928 they began playing on the third Saturday in October and they played in consecutive years on the third Saturday in October for 66 years realignment of the SEC in 95 caused a disruption so four out of the past five years they've actually played on the fourth Saturday of October but now things are back mm. as they should be I guess for the purists it's good to know next year will be the third Saturday in October too in Tuscaloosa Second down. Play fake. Clawson comes right. Eric Watt, who played his first season of college football at Alabama, where he wore number two, transferred after the 99 season. Well, let's introduce the third member of our commentary team for more on this rivalry. Here's Jill Arrington. That's right, Vern. You know, Tennessee has a lot of young players on its team, a lot of players that aren't from the South region. So Coach Fulmer talks to them every Monday about all the rivalries in the SEC, and this week was no different. He told the team about all the great All-American players that came out of this game, about all the great coaches who played in this game, from Bryant to Stallings and Nalen. He also summed up by quoting Grantland Rice. He says, this is the game that changes boys to men. All right, thank you, Jill, very much. Here's the handoff. Travis Henry tackled at the 46 yard line. That's going to be good for a Tennessee first down. Marcus Spencer, number 41. Good blocking up front by Tennessee. And Vern, what they're doing with Travis Henry is they're going to say, hey, safeties, you're going to have to tackle Travis Henry. We're going to block everyone else, and the safeties are the guys who aren't going to get blocked, and we're going to see if you come up consistently and tackle this guy. He's a hard guy to tackle. Marcus Spencer and Tony Dixon combined for the tackle, but Travis almost slipped out of it. Sixth first down for Tennessee. First down, play fake Clawson. He wants to go deep. He can't, and Kenny King gets contact, but Clawson gets rid of it. Somehow. Troy Fleming makes the grab, only his third catch of the season, and Clawson showing real athleticism. Athleticism and poise, Vern, the ability to keep his head about him and his wits about him, about to go down, still knows where his outlet receiver is. The fullback watches. He's going to scramble at first, but once he's wrapped up, he doesn't want to take the sack. He still finds his fullback Fleming out in the flat and gets the football to him. Heads up play, good poise by Casey Clawson. Troy Fleming, the freshman, Alabama calls a timeout. This has been thus far a dominant Tennessee effort. Hello. 102 to go, first quarter of play. Tennessee in the huddle with a first down and 10 at the 44-yard line, and they own a 7-0 lead. Kenny King is out. Uh, he came into the game with a shoulder problem. He's being looked at that shoulder again on the sideline, so he's out of the ballgame for Alabama. They fake the reverse and give it to Travis Henry. Good job of stringing the play out by Aries Monroe, and a flag is thrown from the uh, defensive backfield.
And here was Mike DeBose during the timeout talking to his defensive unit. Yeah, it wasn't Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator. He got to come in second, but it was first the head coach, the former defensive coordinator, that wanted to have the first crack at his defensive charges, and they came up with a good play there after the timeout. Well, we've heard a lot from Bill Goss thus far this afternoon. Let's uh, give him the podium one more time. Holding on the offense. Bill Fulmer, uh, he's a great, uh, great student of the history and tradition of this game. And Jill was talking about Grantland Rice. Phil quoted the article from Grantland Rice that was written about the 1951 game between these two. That also, ironically, was the first game ever televised between these two by NBC. And the broadcasters in that game, Lindsey Nelson from Tennessee and Mel Allen from Alabama. Mm -hmm. That's about as good as it could get. And there's a pass, Clawson under severe pressure from Aries Monroe. Well, Tennessee trying to go with the screen, their fourth screen pass of the ball game. You see the quickness of Aries Monroe. He was there so quickly, it kind of surprised Clawson. He wasn't able to get that ball off early enough to make the good throw on the screen. Aries Monroe is an undersized defensive end at 230 pounds, but showed great quickness right there. Clawson has been sacked twice, hurried three times. It's second down for Tennessee. Illegal participation. They broke the huddle with 12 players, and one guy ran off late and uh, did not fool our officiating crew. Substitution violation. There were 12 men in the huddle, more than three seconds. It's a five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, here you go. Here's the 12th guy saying, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be in this play. I'm not just going out to line up as a wide receiver. I'm trying to sneak off the field. This is not a Tennessee team that gets penalized no. a lot, but five already in the early going. So second and 25, Clawson will go from the spread formation. Scott Wells, the center. Four-man front for Alabama. They stunt. Screen pass, Travis Stevens. Out to the 45 yard line, the initial contact. Made by Darius Gilbert, number 99. Well, we've alluded to the streaks in this series, Tennessee having won the last five. But before that, Bama with uh, an 8 0 and 1 streak. Tennessee had won four straight, Bama 11. Tennessee is trying to win the sixth in a row, and only one team has ever defeated Alabama six times in succession. Have I, have I piqued your curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> Underneath, Wilson, who has the touchdown grab, is across the 50 and tackled at the 49-yard line. Tony Dixon, number 24. As the quarter comes to an end, it was a quarter dominated by the Volunteers. That's the end of the first with the score 7-0. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. We get set for the start of quarter number two from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Tennessee forced to punt here, David Leverton. And the flag is down as contact is made by Kenny Smith at the other end. The ball taken inside the 10, but we might have a running into the kicker penalty here. This is an Alabama team that has blocked five kicks of one sort or another in the last four games. And they were very close on Leverton's first punt. And that time they got great push inside by Jarrett Johnson. But Kenny Smith, from his defensive tackle position, is the guy who actually made the contact. Watch, there's Johnson, and then Smith is going to come in and make contact with Leverton at the end of the play. He had that foot just kind of dangling out there. It would not have given Tennessee a first down, so Philip Fulmer opts to go with the coverage and decline the penalty and keep Alabama pinned down inside the 10 yard line. And the ball spotted just inside the 10. And again, an important time of the game for Andrews Zhao to get hot a little bit. Very slow start, one of five for eight yards so far for the quarterback from Alabama. Eric Parker getting some medical attention. Here is the handoff. And a fine 
Petsy play on Brandon Myrie, number 42. Anthony Sessions, number 22, who had a big start to this season, has been a little inconsistent. Well, we gave you a bit of a teaser. I think we should answer that. The one team that has defeated Alabama six years in a row. You want to? Well, you could actually guess two things, right? It could be University of the South, or I guess they're more popularly known as Sewanee. Yes, that's uh, 1896 to, to uh, 1911. Sewanee, Tennessee, currently has won five in a row. Auburn and Georgia, you see. Also at that spot, loss of three, second and 13. Zhao from the end zone. Gets loose, up the middle, slides down. Short of the first down at the 18-yard line. And Rashad Baker, number 16, was there. When you're a quarterback who's off to a slow start like Andrew Zhao, you got to find some way to make a play. Do anything you can to make a play. This time, a nice decision. He saw the middle of the field open up wide, and he took it straight up there for a good scramble on second down. Now it's third down and two, a good situation for Alabama. They are still looking for their first first down. Crimson Tide trails Tennessee by seven. That's Draper in motion. They toss it to Myrie, but the delay of game is going to be called. No, there was a timeout, timeout. called by the Alabama sideline. They tried to, they called the timeout from the sideline. Mike Dubose walking down the sideline, didn't like what they had called or the right formation. Yep, they got the timeout called. That is the second timeout used by Alabama. One left. Crimson Tide faithful still uh, urging their team on as they look for their first first down. Here's the handoff to Myrie. And that's going to be close. I believe he's got it. The spot's going to be just across the 20. It appears to be enough for the first down. Nice decision on the sideline that time between Mike Dubose and Charlie Stubbs, the play caller, Neil Calloway, the offensive coordinator. They went with the quick count. They came out of the timeout. Here's Charlie right here, the guy in the middle. And that's Neil Calloway there. He's the official offensive coordinator. Neil is the coordinator and the offensive line coach. Charlie is the quarterback coach and the play caller. And what they did there, they went on the quick count. Tennessee was not set defensively. They came out, lined up quick, and got the first down. Freddie Millens and Antonio Carter break the huddle, come wide right. Now Millens in motion. Play fakes out, pressure coming. He slips, gets up, knocked down at the 16-yard line. John Henderson is having a terrific season. Well, John Henderson has just got it cranked up. I mean, he's a physical guy, 6'7", 290 pounds. Watch him in here now. Watch him just get off the block, read the play, and then just find the football. He throws aside the block of the guard or the tackle and gets right to the quarterback. And again, he is a guy who has dominated games this year for Tennessee. He has not been able to be blocked consistently by one offensive lineman. Plays with great leverage, even though he's six foot seven inches tall. That's a loss of three, second and 13, and the spread formation in operation again. Three man rush. They flip it out to Myrie, who slips a tackle, bounces off another, and is uh, finally stopped at the 27 yard line. Well, Andrew Zhao and Tyler Watts back and forth, in and out, uh, almost accidentally the quarterback dilemma taken care of. Yeah, it got resolved when. Tyler Watts got injured and Zhao came in and was 18 of 22 and completed his last 12 passes and played exceptionally well it was the best offensive output of Alabama by far this season. John Henderson uh, shaken up on the last play. And he's getting some attention on the near side at the 27 yard line. You know, one of the things I thought coming into the game, Big John looks okay, but I, I really thought two guys that were key guys in this game were Travis Henry for Tennessee and Freddie Millens for Alabama. And, and who had the most touches and the most impact for their team would determine who won. Travis Henry has touched the ball eight times so far in the ball game. Freddie Millens has yet to touch the football. And he won't on this play as he comes to the bench. It's third and two. And Alabama will go from the eye. 
the handoff to Galloway, and Galloway just inside the 30. I'm not so sure he got the first down on this one. The chain on the far side would indicate from this distance that uh, they needed to get across the 30-yard line. It is fourth down. Now then. Well, here comes Lane Bearden, the punter for Alabama. Mike DuBose doesn't want to take a chance in this part of the field. And Rashad Baker is being sent back. He glances over at the Tennessee bench. Get some indication of how far back. And here's the snap to Bearden. Line drive kick again. That's three out of four. And Rashad Baker makes the catch. Willie Miles is back to help him. But negative yardage for Baker. And he is tackled at the 24-yard line. A 43-yard punt. And minus four on the return. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College Football will continue after this work from your local station. Tonight on CBS, Washington, D.C.'s top cop promises to clean up a community by putting himself on the front line. Craig T. Nelson stars in an all-new version of the new hit drama, The District, that is tonight on CBS. 7-0 early going in the second quarter, Tennessee on top. Got the touchdown on a 23-yard pass from Casey Clawson to Cedric Wilson. Now David Martin starts in motion, Clawson back to throw. Comes once, shakes Kenny Smith, goes right. And he is corralled and knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Some of the faithful dressed in orange thought there might have been some extracurricular contact, but not so ruled. Well, good decision, and again, good athleticism by Casey Clawson. Tennessee trying to throw a screen again, that time trying to go to the fullback, Troy Fleming. And it was covered very well by Alabama, and Clawson able to turn a negative into a gain of five yards, or four yards, I guess. Officially, that's what they'll call it. Second down and six. Wilson goes right. Dante Stallworth opened this game by receiving a 44-yard pass from Clawson. He's wide left. Troy Fleming, number 27. Uh, it's Travis Stevens, beg your pardon, number 34. Well, Phil Fulmer going back to 1994 to compare the way things are now with the way things were then. They got off to a one and three start. Jerry Colquitt was the starting quarterback then. He was injured and replaced by a guy named Todd Helton. Whatever became of him? <laughs> and Todd Helton was injured, the Rockies' first baseman. And then Peyton Manning got the start October 1st of 94. Tennessee squeezed out a one-point win of a Washington State that you saw. They went on for a big season after that. Here is Stevens again. And it will be fourth down. Uh, during the pregame, Todd Helton was honored in ceremonies here. Led the major leagues with a 372 average. And is on the sidelines today. Fourth down. Vern, that has been a problem. Third down and one, fourth and one. Recently, a real problem for Tennessee. Stuffed on that one. They were stopped three times in their most recent game against Georgia on third and one. Here's Antonio Carter, a big punt, and equally big downfield coverage. 49 yards on the punt. And David Leverton, the senior who already has earned his degree, garners some more respect. I think, Tim, 59-0 would qualify as a route. A little closer here, 7-0. Alabama out of the spread. Zal comes right, puts it on the line, finds Antonio Carter. And that is a first down after the 36-yard line, a gain of 14. Willie Miles with the tackle. Time now for our AFLAC trivia question of the day. When was the last time that both Alabama and Tennessee entered their annual battle without a winning record? Last time. Told you 1984 was the last time. Well, now I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know the answer. Hand off. Galloway. Out to the 40-yard line. 
You know, Vern, one of the things that I have a little question about with Alabama, they made a decision after the Arkansas game to not only have Charlie Stubbs in the booth, but the guy out the other side of him, Neil Callaway. Now, Neil's the offensive coordinator and most of the time has been down on the field. He's the offensive line coach as well. And the question I have is, you know, my dad being an old offensive line coach, they like to be around their guys on the field, sit down with them off the field. That's Will Friend. He's a second year graduate assistant. He's the guy responsible for rallying the troops on the field. Not the greatest setup. Here's a second down, and the pass goes right through the hands of Michael James. You know, Will Friend played here, and he's been around the system. He knows the system, but the, you know, sometimes the offensive line coach has to get after those guys a little bit. And then you wonder whether a guy who's not that much older than the guys he's talking to over there can command that kind of respect with the players. What in your mind precipitated the move of Callaway from the sideline to the booth? Well, I think Mike Dubose again was not completely comfortable with the offensive style and the offensive system. And he wanted a guy who's more kind of cut out of the same cloth, Neil Callaway, to be up there. Another set of eyes and another opinion up there about how to call plays. Callaway and Dubose were roommates when they both played for Alabama in the early 70s. Here's Zhao going left, and he has nails, he lets it go, and that causes the ball to fly high. Andre Lott, number 30, got there. Good coverage downfield by Tennessee. Alabama coming with pressure. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Andrew Zhao, nowhere to go with the football. You see Antonio Carter, he's hooking up in the middle like it was zone, but it was really man coverage. And Andrew Zhao does a good job just getting rid of the football with Andre Lott wrapped around his legs. Lane Bearden on to punt again. Rashad Baker, the freshman, inside the 20. Here comes the punt. He got him. And they say no contact. Apparently so. And Bearden scoots for what appears to be a first down. I, I thought there was, was contact down. and he was down. Yeah, I thought his knee was clearly Absolutely, down. Absolutely. And yeah. they're on it. Yeah, good call by the referee. It was Jabari Greer, freshman, number 33, who got to Lane Bearden. Watch Jabari Greer now. Here he is up top. Watch how quickly he's in there, and Bearden knows there's no way he gets that play off. And it was actually the legs of Jabari Greer that knocked Bearden down. He didn't get a hand on him, but he got him right around the shoestring, and Bearden down to the ground. On the fourth down play, first down, Tennessee at the 32. Lawson play fake, good one. Nobody open, though, and he'll tuck it and run. At the 26-yard line, let's go back and revisit the punt, Todd. Well, let's take another look and see if, in fact, Lane Bearden was down. He's tripped right there. Right foot is down on the ground. Kind of hard to see where the left knee was because you couldn't see around Tony Dixon, the safety. I think his left knee hit the ground, and that's what the official saw. Marcus Spencer, the defensive back, strong safety, injured on the last play for Alabama. And as they uh, take care of Marcus Spencer, we'll get another look at the punt. Let's take a look again. Now watch the left knee. Does it go to the ground? Yep. Yes, the left yep. knee clearly on the ground. Good call by the official. That should erase any question. Spencer will uh, walk unaided, but escorted, holding his left wrist. That is not a good injury for Alabama. The two safeties, Dixon and Spencer, have played exceptionally well this year. They've been very consistent. Reggie Miles is the third guy in as both a corner or a safety, and that's who will replace Marcus Spencer right now. Miles in. It's second down and three. Reggie Miles wears number 23. See him in the slot. Now he backs away. Second down. Tennessee with a 7-0 lead midway through quarter number two. Right side. Wilson at the 19-yard line. First down in front of Adam Cox, number 31. Well, Gerald Dixon over there as well, and a little gun shy. They've gone after him a couple times. He gave a lot of cushion that time to Cedric Wilson, and an easy throw and catch for Clawson that time. Clawson now 7 of 10, which uh, I think will please Phil Fulmer. First and 10. 
David Martin is the man in motion. Deep handoff to Travis Henry. Just about broke it. Got to the 15-yard line. You know, Vern, one of the reasons that I think that Philip Fulmer went to Casey Clawson more than anything is that they've moved the ball well. And when A.J. Suggs was playing, they moved the ball up and down the field very well. But when they got in the red zone, they struggled. And the biggest struggle is right there, the TD percentage. 25 possessions, but only 12 touchdowns. They got down there and just didn't execute the same way when they got in the red zone. Bobby Graham and Leonard Scott are the wide receivers on this set. Graham is the motion man. Here's the deep handoff to Travis Henry. Plunges inside the 15 and finds there Tony Dixon, number 24. And that brings up a third down. The follow up, follow up on the red zone. You look at what Alabama's done defensively. 19 opponent possessions. They've only given up 10 scores. That's excellent work in the red zone by Ellis Johnson's defense. There is Ellis Johnson, third down and three now as his team defends their end zone. Tennessee leading by seven. Play clock down inside of five right now for Clawson. They got the reverse, Dante Stallworth, but a good job defensively by Jared Johnson. Allows Tony Dixon to come up and make the tackle. It'll be fourth down. Nice play by the defensive tackle, Jarrett Johnson. He's actually lined up out wide as an end. Watch him stay at home and read the play. Read and react. Keep forcing it out wide. He doesn't get the tackle, but he made the play. Away from the ball, meanwhile. WWF yeah. rules apply. Yeah. Fourth down. And this has been one of the problems for Tennessee. They move the football, they get in the red zone, and have had to settle for field goal. Alex Walls, from 31 yards out, is continuing his perfect streak this season. He's now hit 11 of 11, and 19 of his last 22. Tennessee up by 10. Here's settled for three from Alex Walls. They increase their lead to 10, which causes a Slow motion turnover. <laughs> Ten. Either that or those guys really can defy gravity. <laughs> Ten nothing. Under five to go. Here's Arvin Richard, number 26, one of two deep. Sean Touré is the other. This will be Richard, who gathers it in at the 13-yard line and comes right. Again, good special teams play by Tennessee. Tackle made by Eddie Moore, number 37. And Christian Chauvin with the kick. Well, let's go back and unconfuse moi <laughs> with the answer to the Avlak trivia question. Here's the question. Last time both Alabama and Tennessee entered their annual battle without a winning record. And the answer is 1955. One of us in this booth remembers that. <laughs> One point game, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. The flip out right side, Freddie Nuns with his first touch of the football today. What also took place in 55? How about this? There was a Subway series. Rock Around the Clock was the number one song from the movie Blackboard Jungle. Disneyland opened in Anaheim. Make Room for Daddy starring Danny Thomas. Oh, I remember way too many of these things. <laughs> And the Supreme Court handed down the Brown versus Board of Education decision. Second down. Michael James, number 86 in motion. That one tipped, deflected, incomplete. Andrew Zhao is now three for ten. Yeah. Will Overstreet got his hands on that one. And Again, this is a very sluggish start for the Alabama offense. Only 41 yards of total offense so far here in the first half. And John Chavis has to be thrilled with the way his team is playing defensively. They played well against Georgia. They had the off week. They went back and stressed fundamentals. And they have been very physical against this Alabama offense here in the first half. Third and five. Millens comes right. 
Zal doesn't look his direction, goes across the middle, caught. Wow. Carter with the first down goes way up in the air. Great catch by Antonio Carter. This is not a very well thrown ball by Andrew Zal, but you talk about when a team needs a play, somebody rising up and making a play. That's exactly what Carter did. Watch him climb the ladder on this one and go and get it. Out of the air, knows he's going to get hit. Great concentration by Antonio Carter. Sam Collins on the field now. He goes left. Carter will line up in the slot to the left side. First and ten after the 16-yard gain. Zal comes right. Again, throws it behind Freddie Millens, but Millens with his second catch of this drive. Now let's get some injury updates and once again introduce Jill Arrington. Well, for Tennessee, John Henderson just had a singer. He is back in the game, but unfortunately, wide receiver Eric Parker, partial tear in his posterior cruciate ligament. He's out for the game. Now, on Alabama's side, Marcus Spencer has a bruised left shoulder. He may come back to the game. We'll keep checking. Thanks, guys. All right, Jill, thank you. There was a flag on the last play, and it's going to be against Alabama. There's Eric Parker. And that's a key loss too, Vern, because he not only one of their better receivers, but also their number one punt returner. Now that's the reason that Rashad Baker has been back. After the five yard penalty marked off against Alabama, first down and 15. 323 to go before the break. Paul Hogan will snap it back. It's a little low. Zal right side caught by Carter scoots up to the 49 yard line chased by Tad Golden number 13 with a tackle. Let's take a look at the Exxon virtual playbook. Well this is a play that Alabama used very successfully last week. We call it the rollout tied a shotgun formation and then a key block by the running back. He has to cut the defensive end to allow Andrews out and get out on the edge and throw downfield. They got it. A couple times against Ole Miss, Zao to Antonio Carter. They've hit it once today already against Tennessee. It's just a just a change of pace to get the quarterback out on the edge and not setting up in the same spot. As we take a look at Antonio Carter hobbling off, had a huge game last week against Ole Miss, and Millens didn't play, and Carter rises up and was the player. And you see the end of the play at the tackle just kind of went down awkwardly at the end of that play. Tad Golden, who made the tackle, also banged up on the play for the volunteer. Second down and short. Here comes the corner blitz. And Sal pulls it out of the belly of his fullback and leads out for the first down. Ball's on the ground. Yep. Now, Andrew Zhao is fighting for the first down, but he's got to be really careful. He's a little careless with the football running it right now, taking it away from his body and trying to stretch for more yardage. And Got away with it that time, but he needs to be really careful with the football. Watch Andrew Zhao. He's swinging that ball around, carrying it with one hand, and very lucky that he didn't lose it here. Chain is stretched, and Alabama gets a first down. And they venture in. To Tennessee territory, this is the first time they've been across midfield. Trailing by 10. Sam Collins on as a wide receiver. Mike DeBose is going deep into this receiver core. <laughs> I'm telling you, unless you're a big Triandos Luke fan, you don't know a whole lot about him. And he's out on the field. Here's Zhao, intercepted. Picked off by Teddy Gaines at the 32-yard line. Burn the first interception for a Tennessee defensive back this year. They had two coming in, both by linebackers, and Andrew Zhao never saw Teddy Gaines fall off his coverage and read the quarterback. I want you to watch Teddy Gaines here. Now watch him. He's going to leave his man and then just watch Andrew Zhao. Watch Teddy Gaines on this play. He reads the quarterback. He leaves his coverage and jumps in front of the football as Zhao tried to throw it behind him. He never saw the coverage, and John Chavis knows we stemmed the tide with a big interception. Isn't that amazing? We're in game six for Tennessee. First pick by a defensive yeah. back. And only the third interception of the season. Handoff. 
Travis Henry slips one tackle and gets out across the 35 to the 36. Victor Ellis, number nine, is the defender. The good news for Tennessee, though, is again, you take a look at John Chavis breathing a sigh of relief. First interception by a secondary. Remember, at this point last year, they had 11 interceptions, and Deion Grant, their free safety, had six already at this point in the season. Second and six, Clawson pumps once, lobs it out behind his fullback, Troy Fleming. Coming up at halftime, the AXA halftime report. We'll go back to New York. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman will fill us in on this busy day of college football with scores and highlights from around the country. Now I mentioned about the open week, Vern. Alabama had an open week before their game against Ole Miss, and they really felt like it, it was a great benefit. They went back, they stressed fundamentals, they had hard physical practices like you do in the summer, and they played much better. Tennessee is showing the same signs of the same kind of benefit from their off week. Much more physical, fundamentally much more sound in this ball game today. Third and six, they'll slip it to Travis Henry, and he is caught by two men, Victor Ellis being one of them, number nine. And uh, Kenny Smith also there. Victor Ellis, here is Andrew Zhao on the sideline. Chatting with uh, Callaway and Stubbs upstairs. You know, listening to them. Yeah. Not chatting. <laughs> we talk about the interception difference from Tennessee last year to this year. Touchdown passes for Alabama, only one this year. By this time last year, 10 touchdown passes for Alabama. Freddie Millens is deep. We were told he would not return punts today. Well, remember, Antonio Carter hobbled off the field the last series. Right. Millens, fair catch, allows it to bounce, and it takes a Tennessee roll inside the 25 and limps to a run stop at the 21-yard line. Sunday on 60 Minutes, while other kids play baseball, football, or basketball, this kid plays the stock market. So far, he's ahead by a cool half million. Meet him, 60 Minutes, Sunday on CBS. Derek Parker, partial tear inside that left knee. If you're John Chavis and Philip Fulmer, I don't think you could be any more pleased with your defense than this first half. They're pitching a shutout. They've held Alabama well under 50 yards of offense. And Alabama is just going to run out the clock and try to go in and make some adjustments at halftime to find a way to make some plays. Ahmad Galloway gets nothing for Mike DeBose on that play. And the clock will continue to unravel. Rough going for Andrew Zhao, but uh, made the more so by this aggressive defensive effort we have seen from Tennessee. And the clock will wind down. The crowd today, by the way, 107,709. That is the third largest crowd ever to gather here. The largest being 108 768 against Florida back in September. Tennessee gets a 23 yard touchdown toss Clawson to Cedric Wilson and a field goal. We've reached halftime here in Knoxville Tennessee. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York of the third quarter Tuesday on CBS F 14s are falling from the sky. Is it a government conspiracy or an act of terrorism. Find out on an all new Jag that's Tuesday on CBS. Moments ago, Jill Arrington had a chance for a chat. Here's Jill. Coach Fulmer, you told me yesterday you're looking for your players to step up and make some big plays. How important was that Teddy Gaines interception coming into the half? That's the sort of play that we're talking about that we got to continue to get more of. We haven't had very many of those this year, and our kids have fought really hard, but it just hasn't happened for us. And today, I think our kids, at least in the first half, have certainly made up their mind that they're out here to make some plays. And is Casey Clawson putting that spark in the offense the way you'd like? We've had some good things happen offensively. Obviously, we had great field position in the first quarter that we weren't able to take advantage of as much as we need to. But uh, he's a youngster and learning, and I think he's going to be a really good player. And hopefully the second half, he'll have learned from the first half. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Well, Phil Fulmer a little more placid than is the Alabama coach, Mike DeBose. Just a bit. 
We'll be back in a moment. Crowd of better than 107,000 gathered at Neyland Stadium, watching Tennessee and Alabama play each other for the 83rd time. Volunteers up by 10. Moments ago, Jill Arrington had a chance to talk with Mike DeBose. Coach DeBose, you weren't able to get a lot done in the first half. What adjustments are you going to make to get in this ball game? Well, we got to play harder. Tennessee's playing faster. They play more physical than we are. We've got to pick that tempo up, and we've got to sustain the offense uh, with the first down. We've got to get in second and four, second and five instead of second and long. All right, Coach, good luck. Thanks. Well, thank you, Jill. Smokey, most appreciative thus far. I don't think Bill Al, Big Al, likes what's going on here. <laughs> 10 nothing. Alabama deferred its option to this half. Christian Chauvin will kick off now for Tennessee. Shantu Ray and Arvid Richard are deep to return the kick. 10 nothing. Tennessee leads. Whistles going on. Some less significant to the uh, management of this game than others, I think. Now we're set. Sean Toure gathers it in at the one yard line. across the 25 is knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 28 yard line special teams player for the Alabama Crimson Tide halftime stats Todd well Vern the, the one that stands out is right here five yards rushing on 14 carries remember this is the number one rushing offense in the SEC coming in averaging 179 yards a game rushing now, granted, Tennessee, the number two rush defense in the conference, but they have been physically outplayed at the line of scrimmage with their offensive line. Alabama will toss it right, and Ahmad Galloway, there's a, a play that kind of exemplifies what we have seen so far in the ballgame. This is an Alabama team that between uh, Galloway and Myrie last week in the win rushed for 160 yeah. yards. Yeah, and Mike DuBose was very disappointed with his team's last physical practice Wednesday afternoon offensively he thought they were slow and sluggish and it's carried over today they have gotten whipped up front physically but in their offensive line and again they've got to have a little better balance running the football and Andrew Zhao has to settle down he was high on most of his passes in the first half he really needs to settle down and make some better throws second down and ten no gain on the last play they fake the reverse Zhao still has it he's got Galloway wide open Nicely conceived play, and Galloway finally tackled at the 36-yard line. Vern, you know the key to this play was how Andrew Zhao sold the fake. Watch how long he stays with the fake with the back. Watch him. He sells it. Sells the fake on the reverse, looks back, and now by that time, it allows the back to get wide open down the sideline, Galloway. But the key to the play was watch Zhao sell the fake to Carter, and be patient to set up the play. Excellent work by Andrew Zhao. Gain of 36 and a first down at the 36. Triandos loop number 84 is wide to the left. Here's a toss. Galloway again cuts it upfield. Finds room to run and knocked out of bounds inside the 25 at the 23 and a half yard line. If you want to run the ball out of the eye formation, you better get a good blocking fullback. Watch McClintock and watch the right tackle, Will Cuthbert. Cuthbert turns in his man. Great blocks right there and right there. And the best running play by far for Alabama in the football game. How many feel, and I uh, would guess you concur, that McClintock is as good a blocking back as there is in the SEC. Yeah, he's a physical guy. I mean, Will Bartholomew for Tennessee, the same kind of player, but McClintock is huge. I mean, he's 260 pounds. Did a great job that time. Nice opening for Alabama. They trail by 10. They've got a second, a first down and 10. Pulling guards, the handoff to Galloway. Draper tries to nail the block. But Anthony Sessions, number 22, a fine defensive job. Oh, he just blew this play up. I mean, Anthony Sessions just slipped right under the block of Draper and made a great play. 
behind the line of scrimmage. These linebackers for Tennessee are not very big, but watch how quickly Anthony Sessions reads it and then comes up and gets underneath the block of Draper and trips up the ball carrier. Excellent leverage play by Anthony Sessions. Second and 11. Brandon Myrie is the tailback now. McClintock cocked to the right side. Draper sets up to lead the block. Here's Zao out of the backfield for McClintock who makes the catch but is tackled immediately by Andre Lott who then gets hit harder by his teammate. Andrew Zao took a, quite a shot at the end of that play too from D'Angelo Lloyd who was in there quickly. That was a pressure defense by Tennessee and Andrew Zao had to get rid of the ball very quickly. No gain, third and 11. Carter back on the field, number two. Freddie Millens is also on the field. He breaks the huddle and goes wide to the left side. Third and 11 from the 24 and a half. Let's look. Got him. Sessions at Westmoreland, numbers 22 and 42. Well, they tricked the Tennessee defense once. They're going to try to trick him again. Watch, they're going to try to get the shovel pass to Antonio Carter, but he falls down, and that breaks up the timing of the play. Andrew Zow's looking for him. He can't find Carter, and by that time, the blitzing linebackers are there to wrap him up. Neil Thomas has hit two of 50 yards so far this season against Vanderbilt and South Carolina. He tries one from 50 here. Jonathan Ritchie will hold. Wow. wow! That's his range, I guess. <laughs> I would think so. Mike DeBose telling us on Wednesday we'll try him from 55 yards on in. And that is huge, Vern. They get a good drive to come out of the locker room, and they get to put points on the board. How close was it? Take another look at the 50-yard field goal attempt by Neil Thomas. Yeah, when he hit it, I didn't think it had enough oomphah, but it got over, and uh, again, that's his range. Here's the kick. <laughs> Touchback, Neil Thomas. <laughs> really pumped. Well, the NFL on CBS tomorrow, regional action. 1 o'clock Eastern time, Tennessee's at Baltimore, Indianapolis at home, Minnesota hosts Buffalo, and Denver at Cincinnati at 4.05, Seattle plays at Oakland, and Cleveland at Pittsburgh. And, of course, it all begins with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern time. The NFL on CBS. Here's Neil Thomas, played last year for Heinz Community College in Mississippi, was a very late addition yeah. to the roster of 105, put on that roster by Mike DeBose, only in mid-August. Play fake, Crossing under pressure, gets rid of it. Caught out of the backfield by Bartholomew. And Clawson showing nice presence of mind. We just saw Zhao in the last play or possession make a nice play on the bootleg. Now Clawson does the same thing. Watch as he makes the fake now. He has to get his head and eyes around quickly. Find the defender. There he is right in his face, Antoine Odom. He gets rid of the football and an accurate throw to his fullback. When you run the bootleg, you got to get your head and eyes around first and see if you have to do that, which is throw quick. That's a gain of 16, a first down and 10. Bartholomew with the grab. Lawson hands it off to Henry. Henry with a big haul. Henry almost breaks it. Reggie Miles saved the touchdown, a gain of 21. Nice blocking up front. They pull the guard and they get the trap with Bernard Gooden, the fullback Bartholomew leading up in there. And then Travis Henry, again, he's hard to tackle if you're a safety. Gets that head of steam and then takes guys along for the ride. Reggie Miles, the last one on the back. He needs only 12 more yards to become the number five all-time rusher in Tennessee history. And he has, within his ability, a chance to become the all-time rusher. Here's a deep pass from Martin.
They went after Dixon again. Vern, that is the guy that they felt they could beat deep coming in. This time, they go to the big receiver, David Martin, at 6-4 against a much smaller Gerald Dixon. Another perfectly thrown ball by Clawson over the outside shoulder, away from the defender, and an excellent drive by Tennessee. Can't throw it any better than that. A deft touch by the freshman out of California, Casey Clawson. That's a gain of 38, first and goal. Bobby Graham in motion. They'll hand it off to Henry. Skips inside the five, and then is cut and dropped at the three-yard line. Reggie Miles leading the way. Wow, what a pass. Wow, it really was. You take a look at the red zone for Tennessee today. One time they were down there, and as has been their pattern this year, they had to settle for a field goal. But one good thing about Tennessee right now, that was Travis Henry's 14th carry of the game. He only had 14 carries the whole game against Georgia two weeks ago. He had to be a factor for them to win. He's been a factor for the Volunteers today. Second down and goal. Stallworth comes to the near side. Double tight end set. Clawson with the audible now. Quick setup into the right side. Tries to make the adjustment. Got him! Wilson with his second touchdown catch. Look at the smile on Phil Fulmer's face. He's a true freshman quarterback starting in his first game against Alabama, and he's audibling on the three-yard line. And it's an intentional underthrow, Vern. He throws this back behind the receiver and lets Wilson adjust to it. The defender thought for sure it was a fade to the back corner. He threw it behind him, and Tennessee has a touchdown. Cedric Wilson is one of those, the senior who said last week, we need for Clawson to move in, take this job, and keep it all year. Wilson gets his second touchdown reception of the season. They wanted a spark. Casey Clawson providing a spark for the Tennessee Volunteers. Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by CBSMarketWatch.com, Burger King, Holiday Inn, and by Suzuki. Casey Clawson throws his second touchdown pass of the day. Tennessee back by 14. Here's a script kick right side. They went for the onside kick. Alex Walls came in and replaced Christian Chauvin precisely for the attempt at the onsider, but it goes out of bounds. And they had it. Leonard Scott, the fastest guy on the team, was on the side to make the play. As we take a look at the end of the touchdown, the perfectly placed football by Casey Clawson. Defender, no chance. Back to the kickoff. Walls is going to squib this intentionally and try to get it to Leonard Scott. He's running down there. There's no defender. He just can't quite get to the football. And if your fastest guy can't get there, nobody's going to get there. Philip Fulmer took a chance, and it almost paid off. But after the out-of-bounds kick, Alabama has it at the 47-yard line. Well, we'll soon know how huge was the gamble. Here comes the corner blitz. Zal throws it away. Incomplete. Eric Westmoreland, number 42, was right in the face of Eric Zell. What these Tennessee linebackers lack in bulk, they more than make up for in speed and quickness. Watch these linebackers get to the quarterback. They have great speed and acceleration. Eric Westmoreland, one of the 11 semifinalists for the Buckus Award, the only linebacker in the SEC to have that distinction. He has had a very, very solid year this year for John Chavis's defense. Second down and 10. Three wide receivers out. Waggle comes right, finds a wide open receiver inside the 40. It's Antonio Carter, and he's got a first down of a 37 yard line. But the problem for Zhao, he still is not sharp. He, you know, guys are falling down and making the catches. They're jumping up in the air and making the catches. Very few receivers has Andrew Zhao hit today where they've caught it in stride and been able to continue running upfield. And again, part of that is the pressure that Tennessee has been able to create with their defense and the lack of, a, of an Alabama running game. Derek Brooks and Triandos Luke are 
put to the left side. Galloway comes over right tackle and is uh, stopped at the 36-yard line by Rashad Moore, number 58. Third down. I think this is a good move by Neil Callaway and Charlie Stubbs, too. Going to a little bit more of the base formations, a little more tight end offense. What they're doing is uh, getting out of the spread formation. There's Neil and Charlie talking to each other. And in that first half, they were almost exclusively in the shotgun spread formation. They've mixed up the personnel a little bit more here in the second half. Now, Freddie Millens is on the field. He's in a slot to the left side. Four wide receivers. Five-man rush. Zal up. Zal caught. Ball still in his hands, but the tackle is made. Andre Lott again, number 30. It was a safety blitz. Andre Lott is right here. Watch him slip inside. Now he times it. He waits, and then he cuts inside. And the back, Galloway, not able to, to keep him away from the quarterback. A well-timed and executed blitz by the Tennessee defense. Arvin Richard, number 26, comes on the field. Freddie Millen splits wide to the left side this time, and there are three wideouts, bottom of the screen, third and 14. And the Mustang defense, Tennessee rushes five, crossing pattern. Richard got the first down. Westmoreland had him, couldn't hold him. Vern, last week in the game against Ole Miss, the key play that turned the momentum of the game was a catch and run by Arvin Richards. He broke tackles, he turned a short gain into a huge play. Could this be the same kind of play today against Tennessee? Good second effort by Arvin Richards after he caught the football, and Andrews out finally did a nice job of getting the ball to a receiver who could catch it and run after the catch. Richard with the first down grab, a 17-3 game, first and 10 Alabama, inside the 27-yard line. Richard stays in the backfield. He is the deep back in the eye. They fake the toss to him. Zal rolls right. Good downfield coverage. Now finally he delivers the ball and the flag is thrown. Teddy Gaines up and over the top, number 12. It appears it's going to be an interference yeah. call, Tennessee. This was really outstanding coverage by Tennessee because Andrew Zhao had nowhere to go with the football after he came out. And what Sam Collins did is he did a nice job of just put parents defense spot foul automatic first down. The coverage is excellent, but watch Sam Collins, what he does at the end of this play. When he knows his quarterback is in duress, he's just going to turn his hind end into the defender and just shield him away from the quarterback. Look, now nobody's open right here. Three receivers and Andrews out, nowhere to go with the football. Now watch Collins at the end. Just stays between the defender and the football and makes Teddy Gaines come over his back to make a play. Two wide receivers behind each other, wide left. Millens is wide right, that's Carter in motion. Play fake again. Got it this time. Launches it deep, wide open, caught. Touchdown, Jason McAdley. That is, believe it or not, Andrew Zow's first passing touchdown of the year. Bernie he had two guys open. He had Antonio Carter and Jason McAdley. Watch both of the receivers here. Carter's cutting first, McAdley behind him. Back-to-back -back bootleg plays, and Andrew Zow had his pick of, Air, of Alabama receivers. Both of them are open right there, and Andrew Zow picks the easier throw for the touchdown. Neil Thomas for the extra point. Knocks it home. Think about two plays in that sequence. First, the attempted onside kick, which didn't work. And then the touchdown toss deep in the end zone. Alabama trails by seven. Seven games into the season, Andrew Zow throws his first touchdown pass of the year 2000. A big one as Alabama climbs back to within seven. And Zow goes to the headsets. Neil Thomas will kick off for Alabama. And Leonard Scott is the deep man. Short, Scott at the five. Out to the 34-yard line. 
Shantu Ray, number 33, and Connie Brown, number 36. We take another look at the touchdown. Now, now watch the two receivers, Carter and McAdley. Both of them are going to cross the field. Carter will get there first, and he's open. But McAdley is actually more open. And Andrew Zhao does a good job picking the easier throw to a wide open Jason McAdley. All of that followed the unsuccessful attempted onside kick yeah. by Tennessee. And they were within a foot or two of completing the onside kick. Then the big, big catch and run. Marvin Richard that gave them a first down. On first down, here's Clawson. Play fake. Dodges a potential tackle, pulls up, lobs it out, has a man wide open. Finlayson, the big tight end. <laughs> Vern, the thing that you're seeing with Casey Clawson is he has tremendous awareness and field vision for a young quarterback. He knows where his people are, even under duress. Watch, he still knows where his tight end is crossing the field. He eludes the rush and then still has the presence to pick up an outlet receiver and get the ball to the tight end. Very good vision for a young player. Eric Locke is on the field now, number two. The one-time Alabama Crimson Tide player. There he goes wide to the right side. Locke played scout quarterback all week long. He pretended to be Andrew Zhao in practice. Clawson goes for Locke. He's wide open. And Locke is driven out of bounds inside the 40. And it burned. Gerald Dixon is completely gun shy. I mean, he is backpedaling out of there completely off of Locke. Watch the cushion that Gerald Dixon gives. He's looking in at the quarterback and he is bailing out of there. He doesn't want to get bit, get beat deep. He's trying to cover deep and he gives an easy cushion for Locke to catch the football. Again, it's so much about confidence playing corner, particularly if you play a lot of man to man. That's the seventh time Tennessee has gone after Gerald Dixon in the ball game. Eric Locke has had an inconsequential season. That's only his second catch this year. He caught 14 his freshman season playing for Alabama. Motion, left tackle. Boy, you hate that. Tight end on the left side, too. Witten moved, and, you know, you get something going, and, and those kind of penalties just, they're momentum killers. Dead ball, ball start on the offensive line. Five-yard penalty still first down. And time now for today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete. The award goes to Salim Rashid of the University of Alabama. Rigid Tools commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama General Scholarship Fund. First and 15. Lawson straight drop back. Goes right side. Oh, he threaded that one. Cedric Wilson again. He's got two touchdown grabs this afternoon right between the corner and the safety in a, in a cover two defense there's a hole right in between there on the sidelines and Casey Clawson knew where to put the ball and put it right there you have to be quick with this decision he sees the hole he doesn't put too much air under the football and that allows the ball to get in between the corner and the safety for the completion Second down and one. That's five catches for Cedric Wilson today. Two of those grabs have gone for scores. Second and one at the 28. Lawson, Travis Stevens. And the fullback rumble to the uh, tailback, rather, to the 23-yard line where Tony Dixon makes the tackle, but a fresh series of downs for the Tennessee Volunteers. Impressive, Todd, how they've responded yes. each time this half. They have responded. Alabama went down, got the touchdown, and Tennessee right back down the field. And it's being led by a true freshman quarterback. That's what makes it even more impressive. Casey Clawson had a chance during the idle week last week to go back and spend time with his mom and dad at home in California. And came back. Phil Fulmer said the, the week off really did him yeah. a lot of good. First down and 10. Here's Clawson again. Throws it low and behind the receiver. Did he make the catch? It appears he did. How about that one? Well, we'll Wilson see. Again. Yeah, we've seen this a number of times from Clawson. First, he eludes the rush, but he never takes his eyes off of downfield. He still knows where his people are, and he's still able to get him the football. Wilson, he's open. He knows his quarterback's under duress, comes back and gets his hands under the football. Or did he? Yeah. <laughs> or did he? 
Doesn't take anything away from what Clawson did. Well, the play is ruled. The catch is second down and three. Now it's going to be third down and a long one. Let's go back and take a look at that uh, catch by Wilson. I think it was a catch. Do you? Yep. Okay. Since this is not a uh, presidential debate, I'll just <laughs> I'll concur. Doesn't Third. much matter what I think, though, does it? <laughs> Third and two. Ball at the 14. Phillip wants him to hurry up. The play clock is down to six right now. David Martin will start in motion behind Clawson on third down. Play fake. Clawson pulls out, and he can run for the first down. At the 10 to the 5. Tried to get it in. He was ruled out of bounds. He dived for the pylon, but side judge ruled him out of bounds. It's going to be first and goal. But another good decision, Vern. Certainly, he wanted to throw a touchdown pass with this play. But he makes an excellent decision. Nobody open. You need two yards for the first down. Run for the first down. If he can get the touchdown, great. He steps out with his left foot, but he got the first down easily. Heads up decision by Clawson. First and goal from the three yard line. They'll go from the eye. Stevens. Second down. Waning stages of quarter number three. Big call right here for Randy Sanders. Now, I think he's done a marvelous job calling plays here in the first part of this ball game. There he is right there, Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, true freshman quarterback. I think he's put him in a lot of good positions to make plays here in the ball game. Travis Henry back in for Stevens now. Bartholomew and Fleming are the other two blocking backs. Bartholomew is set up tight right. Play action. Clawson getting pressure. Nailed. The first time that Casey Clawson has looked like a true freshman. He's got to throw this ball away, Vern. This is not the offensive line's fault. It's not the play caller's fault. He's got to know, if I can't throw this right now, throw it out of the back of the end zone, don't take the sack. Come back up in the same position. And Mike DuBose knows he got a gift right there from a freshman quarterback. Bartholomew tried to move out and put the block on Jared Johnson, but he couldn't get there. It's a loss of nine and a third and goal from the 11. And Tennessee has taken its first time out of the half. He protects the football, but he should have thrown that one up into the peanut gallery. Third quarter, third down and 11. Casey Clawson had a chance during that timeout to chat with Randy Sanders upstairs. And you remember, Vern, we did the Florida game, and they were in the red zone and inside the 10-yard line many times in that game and had to settle for five field goals. You hate to, to have to settle for field goals. Now, they, they've been very successful kicking them with Alex Walls, but you want to get touchdowns when you move the football as well as they have and get this close. Third down and goal. Starworth and Martin are wide right. Here's Clawson looking left for Wilson. Let's it go incomplete. And again, Clawson getting a little pressure. Mike DeBose liked the defensive effort. And it's time for Alex Walls. Watch the pressure right here by Antoine Odom. He's going to force the early throw by Casey Clawson. Gets around, gets in the face, and forces the high and errant throw. Good pass rush on the outside by Odom. And now Walls, a sophomore from Bristol, Virginia, is on. He has hit 11 in succession this year, 13 in a row going back to the end of last season. Got it, but just so. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's breathing a sigh of relief. Oh, ho, ho. That one did just get inside the right upright. 20 to 10, Casey Clawson leads his team down for a field goal and gives the Tennessee yell squad a chance to do a few push-ups. 
Thank God they're not playing Louisiana Monroe again <laughs> when the final score was 70 to 3. Now this time Christian Chauvin is back on. There will be no attempted onside kick. 55 yard drive. They get a 28 yard field goal from Walls and a very short kickoff. Taken by Shantu. Great, Great coverage. and terrific downfield coverage. Tennessee from Neyland Stadium this field this arena the stadium was built in 1921 it was dedicated in honor of General Robert Neyland the longtime coach at Tennessee 38 years ago yesterday and the head coach of Alabama the team that defeated Tennessee in that game was another legend Bear Bryant the head coach of Tennessee Bowden Wyatt they have had at each other since 1901 they're doing so again this afternoon Low snaps out, picks it up, comes right. Freddie Millens at the 30 yard line. And an unofficial Alabama Tennessee tradition to the victors go the cigars. The lighting of the victory cigar. Back in 1958, Alabama trainer Jim Goostry purchased a box of victory cigars, which he gave to head coach Bear Bryant after the tied victory. In the mid 80s, former Tide defensive coordinator Kim Donahue joined the Tennessee staff and brought the tradition with him to the Bulls. And that is our U.S. Army heritage. Second and two. They toss it. And Brandon Myrie comes right. It's going to be third down. The more you can do, the more you can do. Oh, yeah. You got to earn your scholarship somewhere. <laughs> Big Al. Third and one, Alabama. Freddie Millens will be on the sideline for this play. Three touches today on 42 offensive plays. Yeah, and I really thought, I mean, he and Travis Henry, who was most effective? Myrie, this will be close. Uh, I don't know. It's all going to be depend on the spot. I mean, his body, the part, forward part of his body, looked like it was across, but was his knee down prior? He kind of tripped at the uh, at the end of the play. Tripped over his fullback McClintock, I think. Watch the end of this play. He's just not able to step over the block of McClintock and tripped up by his own guy right at the end of the play. About a foot short. If he keeps on his feet, he probably makes the first down easily with a head of steam. Alabama, the players on the field want to go for it, and Mike Dubose said, what did Grantland Rice say? This is the game when boys become men. Well, this is a boy-to-man play right here. They will allow the third quarter to come to an end. That will allow the crowd to increase its fervor. That's the end of three. The score 20 to 10. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We began quarter number four and during the change Mike DeBose changed his mind on fourth and a foot. He has opted to punt. Lane Bearden is on. Rashad Baker back to return it. And this is a fine punt by Bearden. Baker takes it in and immediately is tackled at the 25 yard line. Stopped by Herschel Bolden, number 25, who just this week made the switch from defensive back to wide receiver. Time is called again. We'll be right back. Tennessee with a 10 point lead and the ball. They've got a first down at the 26. The freshman Casey Clawson, who's had a fine day in at quarterback. And on first down 10, he'll hand it off. That one didn't develop. Travis Stevens. Well, the, the family Clawson has made the trip back to eastern Tennessee from Northridge, California. On the left, his mom Kathy, his dad Jim Clawson, 
And also a younger brother Rick is here. Rick a fine quarterback as well. He's committed to LSU. Yeah I talked to Casey about him yesterday. I said how's his season going? I said man he's lighting it up. He says he went and watched him play last weekend through five touchdown passes. So uh, kind of unusual to have two quarterbacks of that caliber coming out of the same family. And who uh, in all probability will play opposite each other for at least a couple of years. Here's the screen pass left. Almost picked off by Gerald Dixon. Intended for Stevens and through his hands. Dangerous. If, if Gerald Dixon would have had his eyes up, he would have had a touchdown. But he was so focused in on the receiver that he didn't know where the football was. But that one could have been a huge play for Alabama's defense. Third and 13. Go back to the decision Mike DeBose made during the switch between quarters to not try for the first down. Well, I think two things are he's thinking about. Number one, his defense has played extremely well. Number two, they've only gained seven yards rushing on 22 attempts. That is not good percentages right now running the football. Out of the gun on third down. Here's Clawson. Screen pass to Stevens. He's nailed. Lost yardage inside the 20 at the 17. It was Jared Johnson who's had a big day for Alabama today. Two great plays in there. Losher is the guy who's going to get the pressure. And then Johnson's going to finish it up. Watch Losher get the pressure. Watch Johnson play the screen. Losher in there first, forces the throw, and then Jarrett Johnson reading screen all the way. Good defensive series for the time. David Leverton, the senior on to punt. Arvin Richard is back. Contact, no flag. And a fair catch called at midfield. So not uh, the longest of punts, but a net of 31 yards on the kick by Leverton. Alabama has the ball down by 10. Ball on CBS. Is sponsored by Exxon. AXA Advisors. The United States Army. And by Honda ATV. Glorious time of year to be in Eastern Tennessee here in Knoxville, the Neyland Stadium. 107,000 enjoying this one. Fans on both sides of the ball. And Alabama with its best starting field position today at the 50. Here's Zao the shotgun. Pulls up and lets it go, and it is caught at the 36 yard line. Antonio Carter leans back and makes a 14 yard catch. Before there was a tiger, there was a golden bear, and tomorrow we invite you to journey with Jack as we take a heartwarming and nostalgic look back at a storied career on Nicholas, a final march through the majors. That's tomorrow at 4.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Triandos Luke, number 84, is wide to the right. Derek Brooks is the receiver bottom of the screen. Here's Zhao, half roll, lobs it deep, and over the head. Marvin Richard, who is coming out of the backfield, and pretty decent coverage by Keon Whiteside, number 50. Well, Tennessee has lost three games this year, and they have had real serious defensive problems in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's where the problems have come. They've played good defense in the first three quarters, but look at those numbers in the fourth quarter. They've given up a lot of long drives. They haven't been able to make the play, whether it's a sack or an interception, to shut things down in the fourth quarter. They've been outscored 37 to 33 in the fourth quarter. And Alabama right now at the beginning of that quarter in great position. Second down and 10. Zal back, four-man rush. Goes deep, tipped, intercepted. Picked off by Pat Golden, number 13. How big a day is Andre Lothat? Golden got the interception, but it was terrific coverage that knocked the ball up in the air for Tad Golden. Andrew Zhao trying to get the ball to his main guy, looking at Carter, the pressure forced a bad throw, and Andre Lott got his hand on the football. Andrew Zhao was hit right as he threw this, and I don't think he got his arm through on the play. I think John Henderson maybe got there and forced the bad throw. And off to Henry, tries to slip the tackle of Kenny King. Okay, I think right now, Vern, the one thing that Randy Sanders has to be careful of is not getting complacent. They've played well. They've mixed up the plays well. He's got to stay aggressive. 
They got to still try to throw the ball deep if they've got the right matchup. Let's go back to the last play. Is this Henderson that gets in? Yes, it is. He can't get his arm all the way down through on the follow through. Good pressure by Henderson. And then the play by Lott at the end of the play. Back to the headsets for Andrew Zow. Second down, eight. Tennessee at the 35. Dawson caught and dropped by Victor Ellis, the middle linebacker. Number nine. And while we've got a moment, let's go back to New York and get an update from Tim Brando. All right, Vern, a little something for your BCS pipe that you can smoke. How about Carolina up 10 to nothing now on Clemson? Brendan Russell takes it in. Ronald Curry having a big day so far. Nothing from Danzler, and if Clemson loses, the Florida State game loses luster. Mm. Now, there are those who have uh, cast jaundiced eyes at the schedule of Clemson. Third and 16 here. Clemson back. He'll scramble. Gets a block to Bartholomew. It'll be fourth down. And Tennessee will give it up. Unable to do anything after the deflected interception. But uh, that's probably not the most unwise decision Clemson right. has made today. Yeah, don't force a ball. Don't make a critical mistake right now. Punt the football. Let David Leverton, who's been a weapon for you all year, let him change the field with this punt and play defense. Antonio Carter is back deep again. And here's Leverton off the side of his foot. See what kind of a roll he gets. Not much of one at all. Bad kick for him. Yeah, it sure was. He's a much better kicker than that, and they needed a big kick right there. He follows up a 31-yard punt with a 30-yard punt. Alabama's got the ball again. Here's the lineup tonight on CBS. We'll begin with the new drama, That's Life. Then Chuck Norris stars as Walker, Texas Ranger, followed by Craig T. Nelson in the new hit drama, The District, all tonight on CBS. First and 10, Alabama down by 10 with 10 and a half to go. The toss left, and here's Arvin Richard out of the backfield, number 26. Nice start to this sequence. 13-yard gain to the 50. Nice call by Charlie Stubbs. Everybody pressuring inside for the Tennessee defense, and they catch him in an inside stunt and get the ball outside of Anthony Sessions. The one thing that John Chavis told us about Sessions, he's making a lot of big plays, but he has to be a little more consistent for us. And that time, he got fooled on the play and lost contain. That's a first down Alabama at the 50. That's where they were a couple of minutes ago before the interception. Here's Zow. Finds Freddie Millens, who's open at the 45 and steps out of bounds with another first down. And Zhao hit back at the 35-yard line, very slow getting up. The backup quarterback is a walk-on named Jonathan Ritchie. Recall that Tyler Watts out for the season with an ACL in his left knee last week. Well, the good news for Zhao is it's his left shoulder that he seemed to be bothered by at the end of that hit. It's not his throwing arm. It's his opposite arm. But he did get up very gingerly at the end of that play. Now, Gray Fulgham, number three, is a late ad to the lineup. He's split wide right. Hand off up the middle. Brandon Myrie to the 35 yard line. Uh, Jonathan Ritchie, a walk on from Geraldine, Alabama. He's a management information systems major. Got the chance to play last week. He actually played uh, spot duty in two games last year, was listed as the number three quarterback. And uh, he is, as we all know now, one step yeah. away from being the starting quarterback at Alabama. He's a self proclaimed computer geek, too. There is a player down. It's Anthony Sessions, number 22 for Tennessee, down at the 35 yard line. They're looking at that thumb now. Anthony Sessions tore ligaments in his thumb in the Georgia game. And they thought he might have to get surgery, and they opted to not go with surgery. But I don't know if it's the same injury or if something else got banged up there. But he is playing hurt today anyway for Tennessee. Again, when you're 215 pounds and playing linebacker in the SEC, I mean, that's pretty rough business. Watch the end of the play. Here's Sessions right here. Again, playing with a bad hand, a bad thumb. And 
just gets underneath there. On second down from the 35, Zal out of the spread, handoff to Myrie. Good defensive effort by Tennessee, but look at that pile move with Myrie's effort. Strong legs. Alabama came into this ball game again, the number one team in the SEC in running the football. Look at those numbers today. Only 29 yards, 1.2 yards per carry. And this is a time in the game and a place on the field where they have to be able to run the ball with some effectiveness. Tennessee has outplayed them at the line of scrimmage to this point in the ball game. Third and two, and Myrie is the deep back in the eye with McClintock in front of him. Draper, they toss it. Here comes Myrie trying to string it out. He does. He's loose. Down inside the 10. Vern Andrews out did a great job of getting this pitch off because he was falling down right as he, he got stepped on and still had the presence to make a good pitch. And then he just follows his fullback. McClintock got a good turn in block, a good block on the outside by the wide receiver Sam Collins, and a huge running play for Alabama at the time they needed one. Willie Miles got down with an ankle tackle and stops him, but a gain of 23. First and goal, Alabama. Kevin Burnett got it, Willie Miles forced it. Take a look at this, watch the hit on the football. Willie Miles, the helmet on the ball, it comes out. And for the second time now in the fourth quarter, the team that has struggled in the fourth quarter, that hasn't been able to make a play, they've already had an interception and now a fumble in the fourth quarter of this ball game. Turnover is now 3-0. That the first fumble recovery, Clawson about a yard after the 11-yard line. Travis Stevens, the 5'9", 190-pound backup tailback. Nebraska with a huge win over Baylor. Miami does nothing to hurt its cause, 45-17. And Florida State rolling as expected over Virginia. Georgia, that one was uh, up for grabs all afternoon. And Georgia comes from behind and defeats Kentucky 34-30. Movement, fullback moved early. You know, Vern, right now at this point in the game was 7.50 left and, and Tennessee protecting a 10-point lead. I got to believe that Travis Henry has something wrong with him physically, that he's not in the game, that Travis Stevens, who is a much smaller and a less physical back, is in there right now at tailback. Dead ball foul, false start on the offensive line, five-yard penalty still second down. I will have... Uh... A second and 14 regional college football for you next week. Todd and I will be down in Jacksonville. The largest cocktail party, outdoor cocktail party in the world, Georgia versus Florida. Some of you will see Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time. Second down and 14 after the penalty. They give it to the fullback. They get the five back plus three more. As Troy Fleming, the freshman out of Franklin, Tennessee, wearing number 27. There is Travis Henry. You see he touched the ball 16 times and did pretty well against a very good Alabama defense. And again, I, I got to believe there's something wrong with him because they need his physical running style at this point in the game. He's only carried the ball four times in the second half. Third and six. Seven minutes remaining. Tennessee. Wants to throw, Clawson gets rid of it. Catch is made, that's gonna move the chains. Biggest play of the ball game maybe for Casey Clawson. Again, he eluded the rush and kept his eyes downfield. You don't know how hard that is for a young quarterback to not put your eyes on that guy rushing you. 
to be able to feel the rush and see downfield. Feel the rush, step up, never lose sight of where your receivers are downfield. Excellent work by Clawson. That is the seventh catch for the senior Cedric Wilson. Two of them for touchdowns. First down and ten. And Travis Henry is back on the field. Gets the handoff. Little stiff arm. Picks up three yards to the 25-yard line as Tennessee continues to work on the clock. 6-17 to go. Now Phil Fulmer moaning about the fact, not moaning, but uh, pointing out to us that in the Georgia game, they had three turnovers, wound up losing 21 to them, 10. And today, they have accomplished three turnovers, two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Bernard, I go back to that last third down throw that Clawson made. How huge of a play because now the clock going under 550 becomes a real weapon for Tennessee. Henry is knocked out of bounds by Tony Dixon. Now let's take a look at the CBS Sports Line tat of the, the stat of the game. <laughs> well, it's a tap too. Alabama with three turnovers, Tennessee none for complete college football coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. You got to remember that Alabama needs to score twice. The Roll Tiders trying to, to encourage their defense right now, but they need a stop, and their offense needs to score twice, down by 10. I think those guys were here the last time <laughs> the two teams came in with uh, less than winning records. Third and five. Left side, flag down. This is going to be a dead ball foul, I believe. No? Thought for a moment they were going to whistle. I, I think you might be right. I think there was movement, and I think they are going to call it a dead ball penalty. Offsides, defense. Defense lined up offsides a five yard penalty, and that creates a first down. Wow. Two. Key third down conversions. One by a pass from Clawson. This one on a penalty by Alabama's defense. They were lined up offside. Hard to see. Well, there it was. The movement across the line. Kenny King jumped early and couldn't get back out of the neutral zone. And so a free gift of a first down. And again, the clock back in Tennessee's favor. Alabama does have all three of its timeouts remaining. But the clock now moving with 525 to go. First and 10. Fleming and Henry in the backfield. More motion. Now, was this uh, initiated by Tennessee? And uh, let's check in with Jill Arrington. Travis Henry, I talked to the Tennessee doctors. He said physically he is fine. It must have been a coach's decision to take him out. Now, Anthony Sessions re injured that thumb. They have taken off the cast, put a new cast on, re taped it. Henderson is also down. He has cramps in his stomach. The doctors are working on him right now. That's from the Tennessee side. Okay, Joe. You know, the one thing about Travis Henry is he has had a little tendency to fumble the football lately. And maybe Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders are saying we can't afford a turnover right now, but he is the most physical back by far. Doesn't find much on first and 15. He gets to the 29 yard line. Right now, if you're Tennessee, if you're Casey Clawson, you're using the clock. You're, you're taking your time in the huddle. Spend a little more time in the huddle so the same tempo at the line of scrimmage. Don't waste the time when you're at the line of scrimmage. You tell your running backs, Travis Henry, protect the football first and stay in bounds. Don't run out of bounds. Don't stop the clock. Make Alabama start burning their timeouts. Second down and 14. Clawson fakes, finds a receiver open. It's Finlayson, the big tight end, his second catch of the ball game. And time has been called by Alabama, I believe. Yes. So the Crimson Tide stops the clock. Four minutes and 14 seconds remaining. Four minutes and 14 seconds to go. Tennessee up 20 to 10. They've got a third down now. And the freshman quarterback. Casey Clawson operates out of the shotgun. Steps up behind the intended receiver. Contact and a flag thrown on Reggie Miles. 
a third consecutive third down conversion in an unusual manner. Yeah, well, the first one was a pass, and then a couple penalties have given them. And this was a, this was a no-brainer of a call because Reggie Miles very early on the contact on Bobby Graham. Watch coming into the middle of your screen, Bobby Graham, the intended receiver, and there's the knockdown right there by Miles. Jim Clawson is uh, <laughs> enjoying this, as you can imagine. So is Coach Philip Fulmer. Mike Berry, the offensive line coach, good protection that time to, to allow him to get the ball off. Tennessee is going for its sixth in succession. The only other school to have handed Alabama six straight defeats. The University of the South, Sewanee, 1896 through 1911. That pass almost intercepted. And let's find out what's going on with Clemson and North Carolina. Once again, here's Tim. Vern, this is a very big story. Ronald Curry has 187 yards passing on the day. 58 yards here to Sam Aiken, which would set up a Ronald Curry six-yard touchdown run. It's now 17 to nothing. Carolina leading Clemson. This could really hurt Florida State and the BCS because they play on November 4th against Clemson. Back to Vern. Thanks, Tim. Dodd? Could really hurt Clemson, too. Yes. You know, I mean, this is a team that has blown everybody out this year other than North Carolina State. So we'll find out what Tommy Bowden's team is made of in the second half of that ball game. BCS standings to be released Monday night for the first time. Here's Henry plunging over right guard and down at the 46. Well, Casey Clawson, his first start as a true freshman. Well, he threw a 23-yard touchdown pass to Cedric Wilson on the little wide receiver screen. And he had a couple nice throws down the field. This one to David Martin, hit Stallworth on the first play. Maybe his best throw, he audible to this, to Cedric Wilson, the intentional underthrow for the touchdown. He's done a nice job managing the offense, eluding pressure, making good decisions. And you see what he's done with the football, protecting the football, two touchdowns, and no interceptions in his first start as a true freshman. Now, you've spent a little time with him. I know we chatted with him when we were here for the Florida game. And you say he's got a little uh, California kid to he's him? He's got a little California kid to him. He's got a little swagger. He's got a lot of confidence. And, and certainly, he has shown that today. I mean, he was ready for this opportunity. And uh, there was no hesitancy in him at all. I mean, from the first play, when he threw deep to Dante Stallworth, you could see that he was ready for this opportunity. You know, the team went to see the, the movie Remember the Titans last night. And there was one of the key guys in there was a transfer quarterback from California. And I'm sure Casey Clawson uh, identified with him a little bit. Probably got a little ribbing from his teammates after that movie. I'll tell you something, you don't let anything, nothing, come between us. Nothing tears us apart. Greek mythology, the Titans were greater even than the gods. They ruled their universe with absolute power. Well, that football field out there tonight, that's our universe. Denzel Washington, the star, remember the Titans? And uh, we go back to the California kid who has to call timeout. But all in all, it's been a magnificent afternoon. Summary to show you how we got here. First, it was a 23-yard touchdown, Wilson from Clawson, and a field goal from Walls that made it 10-0. Neil Thomas authored one of 50 yards for Alabama to cut the margin to 10-3. Nice pass in the corner. Wilson with the catch, 17-10. After McCadley made this touchdown catch, Walls hammered one home for 28 yards to make it 20-10, all of which has made Smokey quite content. That is a great looking goal. Third and six. Clawson being chased, caught, and dropped at the 50-yard line. And that will bring up a fourth down. Alabama will use its final timeout to stop the clock with 3.47 to go. Three minutes and 47 seconds left. Crimson Tide down by 10. On fourth down, Tennessee, David Leverton, and this one's going to be a magical putt. Now Leverton can celebrate.
He has been such a force for Tennessee. He can change the field. I mean, he is a guy who is an absolute weapon, not only with the long kicks, but his ability to kick him inside the 20-yard line. And that's something that he has done all year. And this is just a perfect drop on the football. Might be the knockout punch. Just a little bit like a drum major going down the field there. He did. <laughs> First and ten. Sal from the end zone across the middle, incomplete. And Alabama coming in. In the last two games with 407 yards per game, and today limited to half that, just over. Really have to give credit to John Chavis and his defense. I mean, they held Alabama to 237 yards last year in the ball game, and this year an even better effort. There's Big John. Second and ten. Zao pulls up. Let's it fly deep left side. That one almost intercepted by Willie Miles, number three. He's had a good day. Third and ten. You know, this secondary has been much maligned this year for Tennessee. We talked about they hadn't had any interceptions coming into the ball game. They gave up 318 yards passing to LSU in the loss down in Baton Rouge. But they have played exceptionally well today, and they've played mostly man-to-man -man coverage. This hasn't been soft zone they've played against Alabama. They've had to play man-to-man -man in the corners, gains, and miles, and the safeties lot. And Baker has done a great job of covering man-to-man -man and denying Andrew Zhao much room to throw the football. Third and ten. Behind the intended receiver might have been deflected. Fourth and ten. Nice rush by Rashad Moore. Again, right now, Tennessee knows we don't have to worry about run. Just rush the passer. Rashad Moore in there. Will Overstreet in there. Back-to-back -back plays. They put a lick on the quarterback. This was two plays ago. Eric Parker on the bench with a knee injury, so Rashad Baker, the freshman from New Jersey, is back to return the Lane Bearden punt. This is a dandy punt out of the end zone. Terrific. Wow. My goodness. Well, Lane Bearden has had an inconsistent day, but he gets a 62-yarder with that effort. Well, in the SEC West, Alabama 3-1. Mississippi State, of course, two and one, and the two teams meet on the 11th of November. But uh, they're about to go three and two, I would think. Yeah, the only solace for Alabama when you look at those standings is they play Auburn, they play Mississippi State, and they play LSU yet. So they still have those head-to-head -head games against teams within their division. 3:05 to go, first and ten, Tennessee, trying to even its season record at three and three. Flag is down. There's Alabama's remaining schedule. They go back home against Central Florida, then at LSU, at Mississippi State on the 11th, and then in Tuscaloosa. What a game that's going to be on the 18th of November as Auburn makes its first visit since 1901. And LSU, Mississippi State. That's a big game tonight. They play in Baton Rouge, and Mississippi State has played great in Starkville, Vern, but they have not been a great road team. The one road SEC game this year, they lost at South Carolina. And they go into Baton Rouge tonight in uh, a, a very important game for Mississippi State, particularly with Alabama on the verge of losing this one to Tennessee. A lot of comparisons drawn this week to this year's team and the team from 1994. Got off to a one and three start. And it was then that ultimately Philip Fulmer went to a freshman quarterback named Peyton Manning, who began his illustrious career in October six years ago. And this afternoon, it's Casey Clawson who gets the start. 
Remember, we told you Peyton Manning won his first game 10 to 9. His first trip to an Alabama game was here. And how have the two compared? That's the biggest difference. Peyton Manning, two interceptions and no touchdowns in a losing effort. Casey Clawson, just the opposite. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Now, how interesting things are. I, I watch Casey Clawson, and I cannot help but think of Chris Sims, mm -hmm. who orally committed to play here two years ago, then decided at the last minute to change and go to the University of Texas, where things quite candidly have not gone as he had hoped. Uh, playing behind Major Applewhite down there. And uh, Randy Sanders was telling us that had they known, the staff here, had they known that Sims was not going to come here, they would have made a much more serious effort to sign Ken Dorsey, who wound up going to Florida. Yeah, Kyle Bowler, who's playing at Cal, they were in on both oh, of Andy, those I'm guys. In, I beg your pardon. And uh, they had to tell them both they were no longer recruiting. They had their guy, and a week before the signing date is when Chris Sims changed his mind, and it really left him high and dry at that point. Third and 14. Clawson to Henry. Nice job protecting the football by Travis Henry. He took a good lick there and held on to the football. I don't think this is going to shock any of you, but our player of the game is going to be a kid from California named Casey Clawson. 17 of 24, 213, two touchdowns, no interceptions. I think Philip Fulmer got exactly in this game what he wanted, what he hadn't gotten earlier. He got a spark on his offense from Casey Clawson. They made plays from the quarterback position. And he also, in the fourth quarter, got some defensive plays. An interception, a forced fumble that killed Alabama drives. Final timeout taken by Tennessee. The player of the game, Casey Clawson. And the award presented by Salomon Smith Barney. Watch in December when Salomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year Award Show. Now, in all uh, fairness to that kid who's playing quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts now, we talked about the loss. How about 1995 when Tennessee was at Alabama? And the quarterback was number 16. A rare meeting on the second Saturday in October. Manning, 14 seconds into the game, hit Joey Kent for an 80-yard TD. 21 first quarter points. Jay Graham rushed for 114 yards in the touchdown. Tennessee beat Alabama 41-14, their first victory in nine years, and they haven't lost to them yeah. since then. And they are on the verge of walking away with their sixth consecutive victory over the tie. David Leverton on the punt. Well, he's had an interesting day, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, that's oh, and there's a he got popped. Somebody got popped. It was Leverton. Leverton really got popped after he let it go. A lot of frustration here at the end of the play. Herschel Bolden is going to just take a late, unnecessary hit on the punter. Oh, wow. David Leverton just watching the ball bouncing down the field and really uncalled for by Herschel Bolden. And very lucky they didn't call a penalty. Nobody watching that part of the field. Well, Bill Goss, the referee, was looking downfield. They just replayed our replay on the big uh, scoreboard here. There's the tackle on Zell. Well, something really unnecessary by Herschel Bolden because the relationship between these two schools and the fans of these two schools has been, for the most part over the years, exemplary. Casey Clawson and the Volunteers. A flag is down at the 27-yard line.
One more play. One second on the clock. Tremendous defensive effort by Tennessee today. They just can't say enough. They dominated the line of scrimmage. They stuffed the running game. They pressured Andrew Zhao, and they played man-to-man -man coverage just about as good as you can play. Zhao lets one fly, right side incomplete. Now it is complete. Twenty to ten, Tennessee goes to three and three, one and three in SEC play. Phil Fulmer is now seven and one against Alabama. Mike DeBose winless against the balls. Philip Fulmer with his arm around one of his three daughters. Good win for that guy right there. He's a good, good football coach. You know, he's only lost 17 games in his head coaching career here at Tennessee. And Phil Fulmer is with our Jill Arrington. Coach Fulmer, you got the big plays yes, today. Is that the difference in today's win? That was the difference in today's win. Uh, we got some plays. Uh, obviously, there's a million things to correct, but I am so excited for these kids. You know, we've been so close, you know, to to being undefeated really or maybe one loss but these kids have not quit fighting they believed in each other it was their football game today they deserve all the credit and what about Casey Clawson he showed such poise on the football field didn't look like a true freshman Casey's done a, he's done a good job he continues to grow as a football player and as a person but he's a we're very very proud of him that's what he came here for is to play in games like this and he did a heck of a job today Congratulations, guys. Back to you upstairs. All right, Jill, he keeps playing like that. His folks are going to get seats that are not in the end zone. 20 to 10, the final. Tennessee wins it. We're going to go back to Tim Brandon.